Grab your journals, grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your crystals. Here we go. These are the nine things you need to know about this Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse happening May 5th, 2023. You're going to feel the effects of this three days before the day of and three days after we are also in Mercury retrograde. It is eclipse season, so you're you're feeling the eclipse vibes back from when we had the new moon uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, we're feeling all the things. What I am noticing, if this retrograde, this eclipse season is impacting you, and I see what I'm noticing is it's um really disrupting people's normal flow and like uh Angeline spoke into it's a car wreck it's a diagnosis it's a babysitter's not showing up it's uh it's big and yet what i'm noticing is i am handling myself differently in the face of um upset of things not going because I am ascending, I am evolving, I am awakened, knowing that everything works in my favor. And, oh, like, what it, what is the vibration? Who am I being such that I am creating this result in my life? Because I'm 100% responsible for 100% of my results. What has me attract this into my life? And as opposed to being upset, being curious, as to what's unfolding and then stepping into it, like Holly spoke into. Now I'm taking action and using my gifts and tools in the world to pay it forward. And who knows what journey this will take her on, right? So this is where we are going with the Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse happening May 5th, 2023, three days before, three day, the day of and three days after. There are nine of these <laughs> It's so extra. It's extra, extra. All right. Number one, what was the hidden truth from six months ago? The evolution from the dark into the light. So uh, go back in your journal six months ago. What were the things that were causing friction in your life and see what has come to light around it? Where were you seeking? Yeah, I see some head nods. What were you looking? So where was your heart six months ago? Where was your heart six months ago? Deeper truth, secrets revealed, not bad, but free. <laughs> I see some hallelujahs and amens. Oh my gosh, like, right? Right? Okay. Letting go of holding back a truth. Letting go of holding back a truth. So what was that? Where were the endings? You receive your karma from six months ago. You receive your karma from six months ago. So the seeds that you planted, right? The releasing, the things coming into the light, that is what is bubbling up now. It is uh, you may be getting a lot of downloads, a lot of information. Write it down. You don't need to know what it means. Wow, I've been having so many vivid dreams. It's interesting. Like, oh, now I got to remember them. Write them down. Don't don't be like Amber Jake. Write them down. Write down your dreams when they happen. I had a crazy one in the middle of the night, and I got up, and, like, I was sleeping with my mom, and then I went into my bed, and I... I was so vivid and so weird. And um, then I had another dream this morning that was totally vivid also. Write them down. All right. This is um, your soul's permission. Give your soul permission at this time. Give your soul permission all the time. But this is a reminder of that. All right. Number two. This is not a shocker because in a full moon, it is illuminated what's working and what's not working. That can be behaviors, relationships, situationships, jobs, uh, beliefs. 
So number two is asking us to shed relationships and habits. This means, um, and this is, this is old, deep relationships. People from probably your childhood or teenage years, you have a realization that you can't go deeper with that relationship and that its season is over. And usually that means like childhood friends. Um, it may mean family members, uh, teenage friends that you used to pal around with. And not good, bad, right, or wrong. It just means they're not they're not continuing with you in this season. They're not. Um, and maybe they'll catch up with you in another season. By the way, it's not it's not a bad thing. It's it's not that you have to take everyone along with you when they're not ready for the where you're going. And that's okay. What this does when you release these people, and we will have an opportunity in our goddess church to uh, cut cords and release those people. So if, if somebody bubbles up into your into your head, maybe in your Mahjong group, maybe in your uh, group, uh, maybe it, it, it's um, uh, a church group or w whatever it may be, right? Releasing them, having the intentional process of releasing these people, cutting the cords, envisioning cutting the cords, opens up space. As we know, like when we're clearing space in our house, it is a law of the universe that it will get filled. And we get to be conscious about who gets who gets to fill it, right? What gets to fill it? So when we open up space, when we cut the cords, we receive new people to journey with you in this next uh, season. Personal and energetic ownership of my truth. Taurus is still in retrograde and in, I don't know what that says, whirling, whirling, whirling room, not getting confirmation that what to do after we get ready. Oh, so you are, so you're making room uh, and you don't need to make the choices now. We are still in Mercury retrograde. It's a creative time. This is the time to dance, to paint, to decorate, to to journal, to be in the swirl. So you're not locking things in yet is what we're saying. We're still in the retrograde. So uh, you can still be in the question and the, the getting the download of who's traveling with you in the next season and who's not, what the next steps are moving forward. And so you're preparing for that. So you can make notes. And, and it will give you clarity of what to do after Mercury retrograde ends, which I believe is May 15th. Uh, number three, number three, receiving higher perspective. This is the cycle we are in, death, grief, rebirth. So the death of the relationship. You know, it's also the death. We talk about this um, often in uh, these circles is in the releasing of a relationship, belief, behavior, job, season, there, sometimes we just power through onto the next thing. Yes, we created space, but there is grief, grieving who I was, grieving that relationship, that, that uh, relationship isn't traveling with you your old self. So there is the acknowledgement and give yourself the gift of being with the emotions that come up when I am releasing the death, the completion of a cycle. And then what we do is we create space and rebirth as we are in spring, the sacred tree, bringing in the buds, getting ready to pop bloom into the next season. Uh, something 
from the past coming back. Duh. Hi. It's retrograde. <laughs> if you haven't gotten some from the past coming back, I don't know. We're, it, it, just hold on to your britches because retrograde ain't over yet. Um, and it is the opportunity to practice your nonviolent communication. Come from response as opposed to reaction. Notice if you are getting triggered by something, what is that in me that I am noticing that I don't like or no, or no longer aligned with? Uh, a behavior that used to serve me that no longer does. Uh, and stepping in and consciously releasing people, whether that is having a conversation uh, and not putting it on them, taking ownership in the relationship and clearing the space, clearing the space emotionally, clearing the space for bringing new people in. Um, know your energy. This is a, um, <clears throat> sorry, know your boundaries. Know your boundaries. A, a, an opportunity to remind yourself what your boundaries are. Maybe re, uh, reset <laughs> boundaries with certain people. I have one. I know I get to reset. Um, I think this is a really reflective, interesting uh, awareness that we do as women and particularly as moms. Uh, I see this, but now I see one of my mom friends doing this and she's doing it in our business life and, um, and it's, in, it's affecting me and I'm going to share it with her because I know it's something that blocks her in her life. And what it is, is she fills the space and, and takes on all the responsibility. And I'll speak from I in this. So I then lean back and don't take responsibility for the work that has to be done because she has come in and done it all. And I see how she does that in the relationship with her child where she does everything for him and he has leaned back because he doesn't have to take responsibility in his life to do the things, to, to finish his homework, to be a responsible human in society. Um, and I'm going to address that with her because it's something that we continually are practicing, right? Yeah. Is your head exploding? Yeah. So when, when I talk about a hundred percent responsible for a hundred percent of my results, then when she is upset that nobody is doing any of the work, the reflection back is where am I not allowing others to step up and do the work? And, and where it, where do I not trust? others to step up and do the work. So I fill in the space and I've done it for so long. The other part of that is, uh, is as a value thing, will I be valuable if my son doesn't need me to do all the things? If my partners, if I'm not doing all the work, then my partners won't think I'm valuable. So it, it, it's something we reflexively do as the divine feminine. Uh, and, uh, and it's something to look at, at this time, where am I, uh, taking on everything and others are leaning back from their responsibility and I am responsible for this. And here's the thing. You can only, you can only be responsible for yourself, right? That's the only thing I can control. So I get to just notice how I show up and how others respond or react to me. Um, and if I don't like it, I get to look at how I'm showing up. Yay, because that's all I can control. Um, we have a lot of crow energy at this time. Crow energy keeps popping up. It is death, grief, grief, and rebirth. Um, still on number three. Oh, so, and this is what we talked about in Women on Fire this week, is expanders. Find someone who is doing what you want to be doing. If, you, if they activate you in one way, shape, or form, they own the house, they're decorating, they're building a business, they're um, momming in a way. It, it can be triggering, by the way. But if you spot it, you got it. So if you spot their success, it's available to you. It exists in the universe. Everything is available to you. 
So these are called expanders, people who show you that what you desire is available for you. Expanders. Number four, do focus on positive, on the positive of cutting cords. So in this cycle, we are talking about two years from the past and six months. Those are the time frames we're working with in this eclipse full moon right now. Two years ago, who were the relationships in your life? Who are the relationships you formed or that came back like in a retrograde, maybe childhood friends or partnerships that need to be reassessed whether they are serving you at this time? So two years, I think April 2021 still in the pandemic. What were you doing? Who were the relationships you were surrounded by? Tune into your inner child, what is not aligned. All right, number five, Scorpio moon brings up deeper messages. What is the bigger message? The deeper wound is bringing up death, grief, rebirth, last six months, or the last two years. That's the theme. When we praise our period of grieving, we open space for happiness. Can you repeat that happiness. last one thing? Yeah, so number five, Scorpio moon brings up deeper messages. What is the bigger message? The deeper wound is bringing up. Again, the repeat of death, grief, rebirth in the last six months or two years. When we praise our period of grieving, we open up space for happiness. We'll have an opportunity to do that in Goddess Church today. It's asking us to do a physical catharsis. So let the crying, let the crying games begin. Release, release, release. More tired. Rest. You're getting upgrades. They're all. Um, uh, I've been resting a lot, like twelve hours a day resting <laughs> at home. It's what happens when I come home, right? And uh, upgrades. Upgrades are available through our rest. Rest. You are doing work when you rest. Look at it that way. Number six, quantum leaps. Quantum leaps. Instant, as you release these relationships. So look at it this way. The quicker I let go of these relationships that no longer serve me, the quicker I activate my quantum leap. You know, like if I look at it that way as, as um moving me along the, the scale or the journey faster. Um, like, oh, okay, let me let that go. Let me set down that backpack. Let me release that luggage and baggage I'm carrying around. Quantum leaps. You'll receive deep signs. It's asking us to do a cord cutting practice, which we'll do today. Who, be intentional. Oh, not all cords get cut, by the way. You got good cords. Good cords are okay. So let's not cut them all. Let's not burn down the burn down the bridge. Just you know, we got we. There are cords that uh, are are positive and that are supporting us on our journey. Number seven, retrograde is in Taurus till May fifteenth. Need more attention and emotional support. Where have you been told you are too needy? Where have you felt or told you're too needy? It is not true. Just the wrong relationship. I don't know if you see my face, but this is my face. Oh, shoes. Oh, heck yeah. No, I get my needs get to be met. Now, not one person doesn't get to meet all your needs. That is a fallacy in our culture that like my my partner meets all my needs. 
But if I'm being told I'm too needy, I get to to align the relationships that can support that. Because really, it's just a, a valve that gets to be released. Woo! All right, we're coming around the corner. Number eight, number eight. Unleash the wild within. Time for your pussification to come on out and play. Dance, howl at the moon, wild. Release, let go of the truth, just say it from love. There is um, in our culture a belief that there has to be a victim and a villain. Victim, villain, which am I playing? Victim or the villain? That's really how uh, how our uh, yin-yang kind of sits with us. But the fact of the matter is, even the villain in whatever scenario has stuff that they've been a victim of that made them the villain in that situation, right? It is the story that creates the persona. But what I'm offering up here is no one's truly a villain and no one's truly a victim. So uh, when we are cord cutting, you're not the bad guy and they're not the bad guy. We're just on a, di we're just on different journeys. The map, there's there's a there's a, a a divide in the road. I'm just going this way, and you're going this way. It's a totally neutral event. So, um, and we can look at that as our circumstances as well. When I take out the bad of things, what's available? They're just neutral events supporting me and guiding me on my journey. What if I took out the meaning that I was good, bad, right, or wrong, and just on my journey, on my unfolding, and I'm doing pretty darn great. Now, now, I gotta say about that. Uh, number nine in this Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse. It is activating our sacral chakra. We're clearing all this space so we can birth what's next and new. New energy, new relationships, new partnerships, new um, acts in my business, new activations. We get to open our heart in order to open our sacral chakra. The birthing in order to manifest your heart must be open. Open your heart. Do I feel safe in creation? How do I drop into my manifestations? Mm. Yes. This is the creation. This is, this is, I mean, so spring of us, right? Spring, birthing new ideas, budding of the tree. What do I, what are the old leaves I get to clear off my branches in order for the new buds to pop? Again, the tree doesn't make that good, bad, right, or wrong. It's a neutral event. In fact, if the leaves stay on the tree, it kills the tree. So what leaves do I get to release? Yes, okay. Finally receive something deeper. We'll learn why I attracted these relationships. Elders. Truth coming in, past generational trauma and wounds. You are healing your lineage. This work that you're doing, the releasing, the stepping in, coming from neutral, heals your lineage. How many people in your line, ancestors in your line, held grudges, felt victim, victimized? experience things that then made your family choose X, Y, and Z. You're healing this. You are healing this. So it's the high priestess power calling us forth. How will I be committed moving forward after retrograde? How will I be committed moving forward after retrograde? And those are the nine things you need to know about this 
Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse happening May 5th, 2023, three days before the day of and three days after. All right. 